You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider. And now, it's time for the show that breaks down the options market from unusual activity alerts to market analysis, strategy overviews, listener questions, and much more. If it involves puts and calls, then our all-star panel will break it down. It's time to hit the option block. With your host, Mark Longo from the Options Insider Media Group and co-hosts. Uncle Mike Tussaw from St. Charles Wealth Management, along with Mark the Greasy Meatball Sebastian and Andrew the Rock Lobster Joe Venazzi from OptionPit.com. And now, get ready to hit the Option Block. everybody that music means we are back once again it is thursday it is noon central it is 1 p.m eastern it is time once again for the bi-weekly options festival known as the option block my name is mark longo from the options insider.com as well as of course from the ever exciting network upon which so many of you are binging these days i will be your host your guide your festival mc For the rest of this episode, as well as, of course, for TWIFO, coming up a little bit later. Of course, if you folks want to join us live, ask us questions, get bumped to the top of the list, get, of course, exclusive content, including pro Q&As and your options oddities. And pretty soon, coming up next week, I think we're going to have the giveaway for the July Pro Trading Crate. Where do you go to get all that goodness in one place? Well, it's pretty easy. Theoptionsinsider.com. Slash Pro, or for you cool kids, Slash Secret Club. I was talking about getting Slash Dark Side up there, too. I haven't gotten around to it yet, but maybe one of these days we'll, we'll grab that as well. Slash Dark Side, because why not? Sounds fun. Great place to join, great place to have fun. Fun community, and just a fun time to be had overall. The options insider.com. Slash Pro is the place to go. We're planning to have a fun time on the show today as well. Let's see who's joining me to have said fun time. First, let's go out. To the quiet, the sleepy, the tranquil hamlet. No, not of St. Charles, but of Maine, where we are joined on the dark and stormy shores, even though it is quiet and tranquil. It's a very contrasting place, Maine, where we are joined once again by the rockingest of lobsters, Mr. Andrew Giovinazzi from OptionPit.com. Mr. G, welcome back to the show on the quiet and tranquil but stormy shores of Maine. Yes, it is. It's breezy but sunny, and I think... uh... I'm going to say 74 and breezy, about as nice a day as you can imagine. The kind of day that Chicago gets about one one week every six months. Yeah, we get it for like one day in June, like one day in July, one day in August, and then that, that's about it. And it's back, yes, yeah. back to like 45 <laughs> and everything else. <laughs> and you know who is also joining us from Parts Unknown today? He is Demolition. He is the ultimate warrior because no one knows where he is. He is the uncleist of Mike's, Mr. Uncle Mike Tussaw from St. Charles Wealth Management. He's on the move. He's a moving kind of man, so we'll hope the connection holds steady. Uh, Mr. Uncle Mike, sir, welcome back to the program, and where are you joining us from today? Oh, I'm parts unknown, by gosh. Uh, just like all the great wrestlers of our time, parts unknown, and it's great to be here, let me tell you. And for the rest of the day, then, you will be the Dingo Warrior to me. You are now the Dingo Warrior. <laughs> Not even Ultimate Warrior. 
<laughs> the Texas Dingo is from New York. <laughs> yes. Yes, quite the history of the Dingo Warriors. We keep on rolling. Quite the history for this program as well. So let us commence a new edition. It is time for the trading block. It's time to break down the latest topics, trades, and trends in the world of options. It's time for The Trading Block. All right, everybody, let's kick off this dog and pony show with The Trading Block, the portion of the show. What we do just that, we tell you what the heck we're trading, what we're keeping an eye on, what is lighting up our tape. And, you know, not a heck of a lot happening since our last show on Monday. So we can maybe just cut the show off here and say thanks for coming. No, of course, I am joking. A lot popping off since our last show. It was and indeed is Fed week. That means uh, we had the Fed in action again this week, doing their dance, doing what pretty much everyone expected, their three quarters of a point, their 75 basis point raise. Uh, That's a lot of points coming up in our way in a very short period of time. More probably to come as well. Of course, on the heels of that, we also got GDP data And U.S. economy shrinking again for the second straight quarter, now looking at an annual rate of almost 1%, about 0.9%. So, of course, the follow-up to that is, is it recession time? Everyone's worried about the R word, so that's looming. So you have a week where the Fed's tightening pretty aggressively yet again. We got the economy pretty much in the toilet. And what does that mean? That means the markets are green for our second show to end the week. Because why not? Why wouldn't you bid the S&P back up over 4,000. Everything is rosy. There's not a concern to be had in the world. Buy, 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 BTFD. And when it's still rallying, you just buy the pop. You buy more. You do nothing but buy. And as a result, that's what we're seeing today. More green on the screen yet again, listeners. Back up over 4,000. Can you believe it? Can you even process that? 4,051 as we're kicking off the show here. Up about 27 handles and change, or about almost three quarters of a percent, about 0.7%. Uh, the Dow up about three quarters of a percent. The NASDAQ feeling a little bit lighter today, only up about a third of a percent. But intriguing stuff afoot here, listeners, for our second show on the week. Uh, when we kicked off the show, VIX was flirting with about a 22 half. That puts it down about one point from where it was on Monday's show. Uh, VBIX, the vol of vol, get this, listeners, actual vol of vol these days, uh, getting pretty anemic. We're getting back down to in the pre-pandemic days. The range was usually like 75 to probably 95 or 100. When it got north of that to like 125, you know, things were really rosy. But uh, when it got down to about 75, you knew vol of vol probably couldn't hang out there for long. It was due for a pop. We're at an 80 right now and threatening about a 79. So that's down about four points from Monday's show. And also a far cry from the levels we were at for pretty much the entirety of the pandemic. So now it becomes an interesting question, listeners. What does the future hold for Vol of Vol? Can we hang out at a 79 to 80 for the foreseeable future? Is that possible in this environment? Can Vol of Vol continue to come in? Can we break a 75 to the dark side? I mean... In the past, in normal markets, we really couldn't for very long. So the question remains now, what can we do in these weird new markets that we're all living through together? Uh, VXX, 20 and three quarters when we kicked off the show, pretty much unched from where it was on Monday's show. We all know VXX, who knows what the hell it is these days. It's kind of doing its own thing. Uh, UVXY, 1080, down about th- almost three quarters of a point, about seven tenths of a point from Monday's show. SVIX, so our inverse friend, you know, it's up. It's up to about 12 and a half today. It puts it up about half a point on the day. UVIX, our levered friend, also 12 and a half, but it's actually moving in the other direction, down a full point from Monday's show. And VOLQ, a.k.a. the At The Money Vol of the NASDAQ 100, it's at about a 26 when we kicked off the show, off about one and a half points from where it was on Monday's show. So a lot to unpack. Let's go back to the mobile studio, to Parts Unknown, as he is witnessing Great parts of the country fly by his window. Mr. Uncle Mike, uh, A, what are your thoughts on the events that we had this week, the Fed and the GDP? And then B, what is lighting up your tape today, sir? Well, I think what's lighting up my tape today is just more of like the the retro tape from yesterday, seeing 100 points in the S&P 500. I mean, that's just craziness. Um, I think that just where we're at right now in the market is that the Fed is doing what they thought they're going to do. And so I think the market seems to like that. I mean, 75 bips, any, any other time in the last 10 years would have caused great turmoil, but now it's what's expected. So it just kind of like the market's happy over that. 
Bonds are happy over that. Bonds are rallying. Stocks are rallying. Everything is awesome again. Uh, so that seems to kind of be where we are with it. Uh, I really, I felt from the get-go that uh, the reason that bonds have been going down has not been because of the fact that uh, we've raised rates because we haven't really raised rates that much when bonds went down. It was just the expectation of the rate raise. But yet now we're at a stage to where the rate increases are coming and it seems like we're just happy that it's not 100 bips it's only 75 bips and that seems to make everybody happy both stock stock bulls and bond bulls alike everyone is happy with such a thing and uh the market is showing that with uh the big rally yesterday and uh and today as well yeah you know i'm starting to get in that mode again i was feeling it a lot during uh, kind of the initial explosion right after 20, you know, the sell off in 2020, starting to get the feeling, of, hey, am I, is the emperor have no clothes? Am I the only sane one in the room? I'm starting to get that feeling again when we're rallying well north of 4,000, given all the other tailwinds that are amassing against the market. Luckily, I know where to turn when I am feeling such a way because the rockingest of lobsters, if I'm feeling that way, I got a feeling uh, the most skeptical of skeptics, the diehard northern New Englander, is probably. Feeling a little bit emperor has no clothes as well. Mr. Rock Lobster, sir, what are your thoughts on what we saw the Fed do this week, uh, the GDP numbers, and the fact that we are sailing north of 4,000 right now like it ain't no thing, sir? What, I have to what, say. What, what I'm asking is, does the emperor have clothes? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Wow. I, I think it's, it is a – I have to say I'm a little perplexed we had that – uh, I think when, when was the with the ten handle rally? Was it the day the Fed announced, or was it the day before? I got to go back and look. It's like it, it's all kind of a a blur in my mind. I think <laughs> to be honest. Let's see. I think was that yesterday? Like it was a pretty serious. Yeah, it was yesterday. Yeah. So we watched. I watched the action yesterday. Um, and I waited. I actually waited to add short spy, short VIX until try to wait as much as I could till the end, about three o'clock yesterday. Um, and uh, so far as a trade, they're just basically treading water. They're not making any money, although it is leaning a little, uh, leaning a little heavy short VIX at this point. But you know, you look at it and you go, okay. The Fed is going to raise rates. We are in kind of a mild recession, I guess, depending on who you're talking to, of course. Um, uh, the, I guess they're going to write whole chapters on renaming things in the future. Um, <laughs> so, however, um, I think this 4,000 level is something we sniffed before in June. Uh, before the Fed decided to get more aggressive uh, on raising rates. So I, I, th I just, this feels like, I guess the short answer is, it feels like a level the market likes to go back to. And then after a while, they realize there is no good news on the horizon. <laughs> and then we kind of like, a, uh, and we just sort of sadly drift down to, you know, 3,900 or 3,800, um, depending on, the whim and the mood. So, I mean, big tech earnings were not great. Um, they didn't, they certainly didn't beat their number. Um, uh, Google revenue was higher, uh, which is one of my, one of my favorite big techs. I think it has the most reasonable of all the values. Um, Apple is still carrying a pretty heavy value. Uh, again, great company, but not a cheap company anymore. Um, and Microsoft, you know, they didn't beat either, but I guess they didn't beat and everybody was a lot happier than not. So you had a pretty good lift there, like what, 20 from the bottom, about 25 points. That's not nothing. So, you know, again, that one market cap, what we're talking, uh, 25 times earnings again, not cheap. Uh, although it is a growing company, but it, it's again, it's not it's not growing that as fast. So I, I think there was I think there was some relief uh, on the flip side. 
Uh, Facebook, people are leaving the platform and revenues are down. Just flat out. Um, I can't call it meta just because it's it's so dumb. Um, <laughs> can't do it. Um, and this, again, this is an odd one. Not so odd that the, the revenues were down, but I think the market was pretty much expecting this already. Uh, they've been telegraphing this for a while. I think whatever Apple did kind of messed them up a little bit. Um, I don't use Facebook at all anymore or Instagram or any of those things. Um, so I think they might have alienated a huge, you know, a pretty good chunk of the population. But anyway, be that as it may, that's big tech with a pretty with revenue down. And somehow the queues are up one point today. Now, there are bright spots, right, because Congress just said, hey, we're going to spend a ton of money on green energy. Don't know exactly where how that's going to work. You know, a lot of potential um, uh, subsidies for solar. Uh, they're also what they're going to spend a bunch of money on chip fabrication in the U.S. You know, and I've said this like I'm, I'm kind of like, you know, the free market guy, more or less. You know, the government has a role. Does the U.S. chip industry like NVIDIA, Intel, AMD, do they really need money from the government to build fabs? <laughs> you know, and then the next day they're going to raise corporate taxes 15 percent, I guess, to get all the money back that they're going to subsidize. I don't know. Maybe maybe everybody in Congress has they've got doing this, you know, 3D math, 4D chess or whatever <laughs> that I can't quite figure out. But. They seem to be making a big mess and getting very little done. And maybe that's why the market's rallying today. You got this this uh, um, Schumer, this Green New Deal thing. It's it's a big spend, but it's not as disastrous as the earlier versions. So what we ended up with is just something a little less stupid than everything else or more, more you know, or a lot less stupid, which helps. Um so we've averted, maybe, maybe we're rallying on that where we averted this tragedy uh, of, you know, an insane government blowout spend. The Fed is raising, so the U.S. government is going to have to fund this. And those rates are not going to go down anytime soon. So, I again, I think we're the reason uh, we're rallying is because the worst has not happened. And. Just that very fact alone, there was so much negative baked in, there was a bit of a relief rally on it. So, like, it wouldn't surprise me if we stuck around this area for a while. Uh, one, because we're not going to hear anything on rates till September. Most big corporate earnings are out until Apple. Uh, we know the oil companies are going to report huge numbers, and that's kind of already baked into the market. So, again, now we have what reasons we're – since the worst didn't happen, we're rallying on that fact. And that's, you know, you've seen that enough, I think, too, Mark, and uh, too saw seen it where everybody's expecting the worst. But, you know, they get out and all of a sudden they realize, ah, oh, we're, not, we're not having enough money in there. So, <laughs> um, and, I, and I think that's what we have right now. And I'm kicking myself for not buying any Portillos at $17 a share. So I'm actually trying to acquire it again by a, uh, by doing one by two ratios to see if I can get it. But um, other than that, I'm I'm not grumpy today. I actually closed some short vol positions today just to take profits and not like, okay, we got it today. It was a surprise. So I'm going to take the happy surprise day and move along. Move on along indeed. Moving along with the show as well. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not mad at the rally. I mean, I like a little, a little forward, a little higher. I like a little Portillo's. I always have a smile on my face when Portillo's is rallying. But uh, in general, it is it is strange times afoot out there, listeners. I ask you, is the emperor naked or does he have clothes? What do you guys think? Out here, Let's see if the market thinks he has some clothes. And it's kind of a mixed bag. It depends where you look. Vixland... VIX ain't doing a heck of a lot, listeners. 234,000 contracts on the tape right now. Uh, the ADV, 443,000 contracts. Uh, SPY, though. SPY knocking on the door of a very busy day. 4.2 million contracts on the tape already. The ADV, 6.79 million. So it seems like SPY is going to get there in a hurry. Uh, the S, also in a bit of a hurry. 1.36 million contracts on the tape. That ADV has come in to about exactly 2 million right now. So but the S seems uh, on, a, on the path 
to hit that number as well. Small caps, IWM flavor, at least 424,000 contracts on the tape. That ADV, 684,000. So IWM seems like it's going to be hitting that. We'll get more into small caps a little bit later on Twifo. Got a great guest joining me to help me break down all the world of futures options. You guys loved it when he joined us not too long ago to talk about his his calendar butterflies in the ags. Let's see what other crazy trades he's got up his sleeve this week. So we'll get into Twifo in a little bit. If you're listening live, that'll be coming at you pretty much right after this show. If you're listening after the fact, hit next on your device of choice, and hopefully we'll be there waiting for you. And, of course, the Qs right now, one and a quarter million contracts, the ADV, about 2.41 million. So Qs seem like they're on the path to get there today as well. Let's get out to the single names and see what's getting on in the land of single names. Decently active day, all things considered. Certainly a heck of a lot better than it has been of late. 264,000 contracts is what it cost you to break into the top 10 today. That gets you to our old friend, Google, a.k.a. Alphabets, uh, trading right now 113 and a quarter. That gets you, like I said, by the way, 264,000 contracts is what Google is up to today. So a pretty robust day, all things considered. Uh, number nine, AMD. AMD all the way down at number nine. You know we're in some rarefied territory when a whole bunch of stuff is kicking AMD out of its usual number four spot. Uh, today, AMD, 310,000 contracts. So we're already at number nine. We're already over 300,000. Compare that to some recent shows, listeners, where we pretty much number three or number four. We're still trying to break through 300,000. So a much more active day today. Earnings season combined with the Fed and all the other madness conspiring to drive a lot of paper today. Number eight, our old friend, ChargePoint. This is that little engine that could, we've been talking about this a lot on options oddities and just the weird mystifying fact. We also debated it with the Flowmaster recently on our pro Q&A. Everyone's kind of scratching their chin as to why this little name, this charge point, trading $15 right now, good day for them, up nearly 2 bucks or nearly 15%. Why this little name continues to do just ridiculous amounts of options paper, 50,000 lots, 25,000 lots, at a clip routinely, day after day. I have a feeling charge points putting up some numbers again today as well. Then let's see, number seven, we've got NVIDIA, our old friend, 396,000 contracts. And number seven, we're already almost at 400K. Number six, the aforementioned Microsoft, 473,000 contracts. Microsoft hanging out right now, 274.44, up nearly six bucks or a little over 2% on the day. As the Rock Clubs you mentioned, some decent, not below the doors off news, but decent news uh, coming out for them. The headlines are not as terrible as they seemed, which is always an interesting way to couch it. But Microsoft getting a little bit of a rally out there right now. It was 251 just on Tuesday session. So trading 275 now, actually, gapping up a little bit more. So, uh, yeah, so nice little run. Talking, yeah, 24 handles, 23 and change uh, just since Tuesday. So a nice little pop for good old softy. Number five, it's Ford. Uh, Ford kind of on the rampage these days as well. Threatening 14 bucks. If I got, did it get, yeah, I got there today. Got to $14 again. It was trading around 11 not too long ago. So up 80 cents or 6% today on Ford. Uh, They beat their number out there, raising their dividend as well. So all of you out there who've got some Ford in the old back pocket, it's a good day for you folks out there. Will we be threatening that 26 handle again anytime soon? I don't know. I think we might need a a stake in a high-flying meme name like Rivian to really accomplish that again anytime soon. And, of course, look how well that turned out, listeners. But still intriguing times for Ford. Uh, number four, the Amazonian, 645, by the way, Ford 609. So Ford pretty active, 609,000 contracts. Uh, number four, Amazon, 645,000. Now we get to some of our regular offenders here, the usual suspects. Number three, as I said, number three, it's Apple, 885,000 contracts. So kind of light for them today. Uh, closing in on 157 right now. They're kind of unched on the day. They are kind of hanging out in their pre-earnings period. So maybe don't expect a huge move from them until after the bell. Number two, the artist formerly known as Facebook, hanging out at 158 off 11 and a half handles or six and three quarters percent just today. Got down to 155 and actually 154 and a quarter. That was that's their low for the year as well. And we were talking not too long ago about Facebook at 200. It seemed like they might be threatening again. Even last week, 183, they got up to. But 200 was that kind of that barometer everyone was watching. We sold off through it initially back in March, then we rallied again back through it in May. 
and April actually dropped to 233, and then they just kind of gave up the ghost. It kept trying. They got back up again in May, over 200, 223 and change, and ever since then it's been just kind of just a beating on good old, I almost said meta, Facebook. <laughs> You're right. It does seem like Apple really put the screws to them. 918,000 contracts on the tape. Of course, the rebranding, the refocusing, not really maybe helping matters as well. And Facebook always seemed to have just in general bad PR on top of it. So it's kind of a one, two, three punch for them. 158 listeners. Are you liking Facebook at these levels? Do you think there's um, – that might be a good poll question. What are you thinking? What are you thinking in Facebook, a.k.a. Meta right now? Maybe we'll do that next week. And then we've got uh, number one out there today, listeners. It's the old Tesla uh, rallying hard today, almost 14 handles, about 1.6%, trading right around $838 today. Earlier this morning, it was trading 822 so a nice pop intraday here for Tesla. Good for 1.11 million contracts. So Tesla on the rampage, listeners. Uh, you know by now there's some big names are popping off this week. We had Coke, UPS, GM, GE, Mickey D's on Tuesday, a Boeing, Spotify, Ford, Meta. Oh, I said it. I'm sorry, Facebook, <laughs> Qualcomm on yesterday. Today we have Tilray, Pfizer, Southwest, Merck, and Amazon, Roku, and my old stomping grounds of Intel tomorrow. We got Exxon, Chevron, P&G, Philips 66, and AstraZeneca. Luckily for you folks, we like you, and we've got hot off the presses, the earnings move, results, earnings move, earnings season, and earnings trades reports. So that five times fast listeners from our friends over there at Orats. Let's kick it off with the earnings move results. Let's see what was popping off this morning. That's interesting in our hot little hands. Let's go out to Southwest Airlines, Air Before the Bell. <clears throat> Excuse me. They were trading at 40 and three quarters going into their announcement. They're pricing in 4%. They delivered 8% to the dark side listeners. They're trading at 37 and a half when we ran those reports right before showtime. So, wow. Bad times for love. Let's see what else we've got here on the earnings move results. Listen, there's so many names. Scroll through so many names. Oh, here, I was talking about Ford. Ford, they were yesterday after the bell. They were at $13.20 going into their announcement. They're pricing in 5.9%. They delivered 3.9%, so actually underperforming on the Ford side, but enough to send them popping today. Uh, Etsy, you guys like arts and crafts. Etsy was yesterday after the bell. 95 and a half is where they were trading. They're pricing in 13.4%. They delivered 9.9%, so... Getting a lot of earnings underperformance out here, listeners, which is is kind of interesting and a little bit surprising, I do have to admit. Let's go out to Facebook, a.k.a. Meta. Don't tell anybody I said that. They were yesterday after the bell. 169.58 is where they went into their announcement. They were pricing in 9.3%. You know, with this sell-off, they still underperformed. They only delivered 6.5%. Interesting. So uh, surprising stuff afoot there, listeners, for good old... I'm not going to say it. Facebook. I have to beat myself into not saying the M word because no one needs that M word in their lives. Listeners. All right. More name. Just so many tickers popping off here this week. Listeners trying to find some fun ones for you in the list. You know, this, the nice thing about this listeners is that when you guys go to the options, insider.com, click on that options news and articles tab, you will have an embarrassment of riches in terms of <laughs> how many tickers you can look at. Let's go out to some of the ones that are popping off after the bell today. That's what you guys are really waiting for. Let's get to Apple first. They're right after the bell today. They're trading almost 157 as of this report, 156.79. They're pricing in, get this listeners, $5.39. In the past, they've moved 536. So they're past they're pricing in, I should say, that the past is prologue here. We are going to see pretty much exactly what we've seen before. That much and no more. Are you buying in what they're selling? You think that's that's enough? Is that too much? What do you guys think about that Apple level of juice? And like it's come in a little bit. I thought they were pricing in more juice not too long ago. Then we've got Amazon, same deal. They were they are today, I should say, after the bell. They're at almost 121 when we ran this report. They're pricing in six dollars and sixty nine cents. In the past they moved six sixty seven. That is strange. Two big names like that lining up almost identical to their previous straddles. Usually, the market makers are a little bit more imaginative than that. Listeners, wow, that's interesting. Let's go out to my old stomping grounds. Let's see if we can be three for three. Let's go out to Intel there today after the bell. $40.18 is where they were trading. 244 is what they were pricing in. In the past, they've moved 
302. So a little bit more, a little should say a little bit less juice on the docket there for Intel, which is kind of strange. You guys like a taste of first solar? Why not? 76 and three quarters. They're today after the bell. They're pricing in $5.91. In the past, they've moved 381. So they're pricing in a lot of extra juice out there, listeners, for first solar, which again, understandable. Let's go out to, oh, we got Roku after the bell. You guys remember Roku? They were a frequent offender. They were a hot options name for quite some time. I never really understood it why the set top box name had so much volatility associated with it. They've kind of cooled down a bit, but they're popping off after the bell today. 86.92 is where they are trading. They're pricing in $10.63. In the past, they moved eight seventy five. dollars So they are pricing in some Rock'em Sock'em Robots earnings here, listeners. Wow. Roku, are they going to be back on our frequent offenders? Are they going to be back on our movers and shakers list, listeners? I don't know. Interesting stuff. Oh, here's a name you may have heard of. SIBO. Popping off tomorrow before the bell. Uh, they were trading one twenty five fifteen. They're pricing in $2.89. In the past, they've moved three oh six. What are your thoughts on SIBO these days? In the past, they were a great play, kind of a bit of a inverse play, if you will. You know, had all that vol products, and so obviously they would do well in some uh, down market situations. These days, SIBO has become much more of a diversified player. They own international equity exchange. They own bats. They own a bunch of other things outside of SPX and VIX. So how diversified are they at this point in terms of delivering that inverse bang for your buck? I don't know. It's an interesting question. If you folks, I haven't really traded much SIBO in recent years. I did when they first announced, just, just for the fun meta joy of trading options on the SIBO. It seemed like a strange, fun meta thing. But hit us up. Are you guys trading a lot of SIBO? you have thoughts on them at these levels? Are they still a good, in your opinion, a still a good inverse play for what we're seeing out there in the markets? Uh, hit us up. Let us know, listeners. Let's look right now. The season, we are now in week two. A week one with 100 names reporting came in at 106%, so pretty much outperforming there. Week two so far with 92 names reporting, 101%. So we are hanging out at about 104%. So, so far, so good, listeners, when it comes to earnings, volatility, and oh man, are there a lot of earnings trades going up today, listeners. I can't even... (laughs) <laughs> 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. If you haven't checked out the earnings trades report in a while because they haven't had some new entries or exits, uh, there are 12 positions going up being added to the reports today. Listen, that puts us at 61 long straddles, 32 short straddles, and 51 long calendars for your trading education and information. Listen, you know where to go to find all this goodness and a whole bunch more. TheOptionsInsider.com is the place to go. Meanwhile, we got to get on out of here and into the odd block. It's time to break down the most interesting, unusual, and downright questionable options activity that's been identified by TheOptionsInsider.com. It's time for the odd block. Everybody, it is time to get weird. It is time to get wild. It is time for the odd block. Our first name is an old friend, a frequent offender. We're going back to the world of rolled aluminium, listeners. The Brits will be happy because we're talking about Constellium SE, ticker symbol CSTM. Trading right now $14.46. A year ago, they were trading $19 even. They got up to their high for the year in September 2160. And they kind of sold off, got down to 17 to change in December. Beginning of this year with all the you know inflation, input, goods, rallying, they rallied a bit as well. In February 23rd, so right before the invasion pretty much, they got up to 20 and a half bucks. And they have pretty much been selling off ever since. Except they got to their nadir on June 23rd of $11.79. They've actually had a nice run since then. Back up to where they are right now, $14.46. Pretty much unched on the day today. It looks like our Eye of Sauron, Mr. Rock Lobster, found a bit of a weird one. It uh, could be an opening call spread on both legs, even though there is size paper on the second leg, which makes it weird. Usually, listeners, when you roll something, you roll it farther out. But if this was a roll, 
It would actually be rolling it back and up, which is not the kind of roll we normally see. Uh, what we saw today, listeners, was 18,683 of the July 14 calls expiring on the 29th going up against the AUG 13 puts. And actually, it's also puts versus calls. Also another way that these types of spreads. So what you got more is a, actually a bit of a time strangle slash yeah, it looks like it could be a time strangle, actually, because they lifted, yeah, it looks like they, well, the mid-market on the puts, but they're lifting the kind of close to the offer on the calls. Could be a strangle, could be a stupid, time stupid, could be a time risk reversal. There are many different flavors that this thing could be, but it is definitely opening on the July 14 calls expiring on the 29th. Uh, the AUG 13 puts, like I said, those have some OI to them, so it'd be a strange one to roll them back and into the calls, but we've seen weirder things. Uh, Mr. Rock Lobster, <laughs> what are your takes on what is your take? I should say on this bit of weirdness we're seeing right now, and everyone's favorite manufacturer of rolled aluminium, Constellia. What's going on there? Someone calling you, sir? It was you. I was calling. I had you. some de- some delayed action from Option Pit hitting my phone and at the same time. Well, that's weird. I was not calling I, you. I I totally believe you. I, I was like, uh, it was some sort of a time delayed thing here. Let's see here. Uh, oh, let's see. So the fourteen calls and CSTM. You're saying eighteen thousand of these trade, and then they traded the seven and a half puts. No, they traded the thirteen puts expiring on August. Oh, 12th. oh, 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 oh! Whoops, I went. I, I, I skipped ahead. The August, August ordinary. Oh, the Augie 12, 13 puts. Uh, interesting. So they're buying the calls early, um, and then selling the puts to pay for them. Uh, I'm just again. I'm trying to figure this one out. I see. I see some open interest on the fifteens. Um, so I'm not quite sure what the what the deal was. So so they're buying some calls and then they're trying to finance them with a some kind of put sale or put per. Wow. OK, totally weird. Don't get that trade whatsoever. <laughs> well, they so they're buying some out of the money put. OK, so they're buying a little longer term out of the money put, but they're buying a little more near-term calls that are kind of smoked out to nothing. Because I've got the 14, oh, the 14s are worth 50 cents. Um, anyway, I, again, this is bizarre land trade. Don't, don't get the put purchase. I guess they, I, I don't know. I, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I guess because they're buying short-term calls, they expect to take delivery of the stock and they're going to protect with the put maybe and look for a little upside uh, upside pass. That's the only thing I can think of on that one. It's a whole heck of a lot of paper for a lot of weirdness. That's for sure. <laughs> doing doing this thing nearly 19,000 times on both legs. That's a lot of paper for some head scratching weirdness. That's for sure. It, I'm I'm going to concur with you on that. There is some head scratching weirdness. Oh, and by the way, just on charge point, you remember that is a leading volume indicator uh, from you were yes. doing the volume on yes. that. You know, charge point is in the you know charging business, right? Which would be a a, a beneficiary of green largesse, would it not from the government? And there has been, I would say, over the last six weeks. That has been on the big money flow <laughs> like list of things to look at for the last six weeks. So somebody somehow, some way knew that something was going to be happening because this stock was trading nine dollars in uh, May and is now trading 15 bucks. So a charging station company that was dead on arrival is now very much alive with about a with with. A hundred and something to two hundred thousand contracts expiring today, <laughs> expiring tomorrow. So anyway, I just I'm adding that to the odd block because 
that falls into the rubric of somebody knew something somewhere <laughs> along the line. Yeah, that one's been doing paper like every day for the last, you're right, at least a couple of months. It's been crazy how much paper. You could do literally yeah. every every day have a charge point show, and there would be a lot to yeah. talk about. And, there was, and it was Green New Deal was dead. Dead, dead, dead. Apparently not, right? Because Manchin and Schumer must were in the back office, you know, they were they're talking, but somehow some something leaked out of that office and into charge point options. So just saying, you know, I don't know who it was, but as we have seen on this show many a time, there is no such thing as a coincidence when it comes to buying options and having immediate gratification the day after <laughs> what was so, paul pelosi up to that's what i want to know i you know i'm gonna guess I'm, I'm not saying but it would not surprise me if he owns some charge point oh he, he I think, i'm pretty sure he does if he doesn't then he's he's doing it wrong because i would i would at least it would make my heart good to know that he's just that good like he's there's no shame at all <laughs> like i'm gonna buy some of this <laughs> Because there's no way that he would have known, I guess. But he's, you know, he's a Green New Dealer. You know, he's he wants to, he's on, he's on, he wants to get on the forefront of all that stuff. Yes, yes, very much so. So uh, a weird one, definitely. We played Stump the Rock Lobster, and it was fun today with this weirdo. Call it a spread, not really a roll, I don't think, uh, but funky, stupid. Uh, <laughs> strangle, call it what you will. A uh, weird one here. Let's go out to. A newcomer here next on the odd block. This is everyone's favorite Rand Pack Holdings Corp. Ticker symbol Pack P A C K. They manufacture machines and paper products that are used in protective paper based packaging for shipping goods. So that's about as exciting as it sounds. Uh, trading right now $5.14. It's been a rough year for Rand Pack. Well, that's an awful rough day. They're off 25% today, a buck and three quarters. On the year, a year ago, yeah, it has been a rough year as well. They're trading for twenty-four dollars and sixty-one cents. Uh, they got up to forty, almost forty-three, forty-two ninety-seven on November eighteenth, and then it's been pretty much a straight shot down ever since. Listeners, to where they are right now, five dollars and fourteen cents. Five eleven was their low, so they hit their pretty much low for the year today. I guess the market for protective paper-based packing for shipping goods and merchandise is no bueno. My good, their two Q, their their Q two loss was much wider than expected. So, man, the blood is in the water here for Pack. Let's see what our eye of Sauron found. Maybe someone's scooping some calls. I think the the blood is done, but it does not appear to be the case. Listen, actually, no, I take it back. Uh, we got some puts trading five thousand one hundred and thirty of the AUG seven half puts, but they went up for a buck forty. So, Mister Rock Lobster, somebody is drawing a line in the sand because these were a buck forty bid. At 215, they crushed that bid. They weren't playing. They said, you know what? How many can I get here done selling 5,130 on the bid for a buck 30? Uh, the stock was $5.92 when these went up. So a wee bit, a wee bit higher. They're, they're wearing it a little bit on that one. And these are the seven and a half puts that they sold too for a buck 40. So these things are, are deeply in the money <laughs> even more. To the tune of uh, nearly two bucks. Where are we at? We're at about five fourteen. Yeah, so a buck eighty six, and they sold them for a buck forty. So this one's going to be a bit of an ouchie. Interesting choice on the seven. I have to imagine there's probably a dearth of strikes and pack. I haven't pulled them up right now, so I don't know. So probably their choices were probably seven half or five, and maybe they didn't want to go all the way down to the five strike. In retrospect, probably would have been a better choice. But uh, interesting stuff, Mister Rock Lobster. They drew their line in the sand. And now that line has been aggressively crossed at the uh, seven and a half. Actually, that's seven. I was thinking they're selling the seven puts. They're selling the seven and a half puts. So these are even more, <laughs> more in their face. So, wow. Uh, what do they do now, Mr. Rocklops? This is always the question. You draw the line in the sand, and then your line is crossed. What do you do, sir? Well, I, I mean, they're, they're kind of – they're sort of stuck with this, right? It's not a um... – They better like some pack. They they better like some pack. I th I think they're kind of uh, uh, you know I, they they the worst thing was they kind of hit the bid and then that was like feels like it was the low tick of the day kind of you know it's sort of the only option you know the only there's only about twenty contracts traded in the whole name and somebody comes in and dumps 
uh, 5,000 of these things at $1.40 and <laughs> whatever. And now they're trading two forty or dollar seventy, and now they're trading two forty. So, I, I guess I guess they wanted themselves some pack at six dollars. That's the only right around that level. The only thing I could think of. Well, they got it. They got it. It uh, it reminds me, sadly, of Oatly. <laughs> um, there is some there is some Oatly sad sadness there on that one. So, uh, quite quite. It was quite interesting as far as that goes. I'll have you know, Oatly is um, up seven cents today, sir. So nana nana boo boo to you. I know, but it it just reminds me. Okay, like how low can the stock go? And yeah, this every stock can always go get cut in half. Just as a reminder to every listener, the stock is seven, it can be cut in half. Go to three and a half, it can be cut in half. So <laughs> this is um, this looks sadly like uh, one of those names that is on. Um, it is on the road to Palookaville, sadly. Yeah, this one is not looking uh, bueno. Yeah, seven and a half puts for a buck forty, so they're in at six ten. Listeners, the stock's right around five ten now, so this thing's already a buck in their face. That's an ouchie. But hey, he wanted his stock. I'm assuming that is what he wanted when he he didn't even work these. He just crushed the bid, so he got his stock. We shall see what he does with it, listeners. Let's go out to one more, then we'll get to some of your fun. Let's go out to uh, Southern Co. This is an American gas and electric utility based, not surprisingly, in the south. Ticker symbol SO. Trading right now $75.30, up about 2 bucks today on the year. A year ago, it was trading $64. It hit its high for the year of 77 and a quarter back in April. Hung out around that range for a while, then took it on the chin. June 7th, it was $76. By June 17th, it was $65. And then it rallied all the way back up from there again, back to 75 and change where it is right now. So we're hanging out close to the highs for the year. What did our eye of Sauron find? Looks like Mr. Rockloff or somebody is going to take some of those profits and put them in their back pocket. And if it gets called away, not the worst for wear either. They dumped 5,001 of these 77 half calls for 77 and a half cents, appropriately enough. Uh, the stock was 75 at 85, so they got a little bit of price improvement on these. I should say the market for the options was seventy five eighty five. The stock was seventy four eighty seven when these went up. They just had earnings. This is a post earnings call, right? Seems like Mister Rock Lobster a little bit of the old harvesting of the risk premium, and if they get their stock called away. I don't think they'll be too mad at that. Pretty much a fifty two week high level, sir. Yeah, interesting, right? Don't you think? Yes, interesting. I would concur. Interesting trade here. Um, you know. You're looking at these like, okay, I'm going to sell. You know, it's it's weird how as the market kind of moves around, you know, was 3,700, now it's 4,000. Um, and the types of trades you see uh, that kind of change around a little bit. But now, like folks are back to writing calls for 1%. It's out to September. Sort of. It's almost like you could almost write the script. Um, you know, we have a rally. You know, there was buyers of uh, stock. Let's say now we got a lift. They're going to sell out the like sell the calls. Um, you just you see this and you it doesn't. I would just say it's like as the market rallies, you're going to see the call writers start to come out. Uh, you know, take advantage of the fast rally and generate some bucks. So, not an unreasonable uh, not an unreasonable idea in my mind, but. There you have it. I think that's just it's just a symptom of what we have. We had a, a fairly brisk run uh, just recently, and somebody's taken some profits today. Taken some profits indeed. Speaking of things that are not reasonable, you folks are always reasonable, so let's get to you a little bit of the old mail block. It's time to take your seat on the all-star panel as we read your emails, tweets, Facebook messages, website comments, and much more. It's time for The Mail Block. All right, everybody, welcome to The Mail Block. Before we get to your Q's and some A's, let's pay off what we've got going so far here for our question of the week. We said the Fed is back this week, sending traders into a tizzy about interest rates. But if you had to buy a spy call, at the money call, I should say, spy. Some, let me say that over. <laughs> if you had to buy a spy at the money call or put, 
At the time we wrote that, that at the money was right around 3970. Expiring at the end of the week, which way would you go? Let's go out to Uncle Mike now. He's been waiting patiently as he's been driving through the lands and parts unknown. Mr. Uncle Mike, we gave them three choices. You're buying that spy put so you're fading the rally. You're buying that spy call so you're rally ho. Or you're buying that spy straddle because you're greedy. What is your vote and what do you think our crazies are voting for, sir? Well, I mean, I think, you know me, I would have definitely been buying the call, <clears throat> but uh, I'm willing to bet the crazies were fading the rally because I think that uh, just 4,000 was kind of a scary number. I didn't really aggressively play it either way, so I didn't put my money where my mouth is, but if I had a gun to my head, I would have said buy the call, and my prediction, excuse me, for the crazies would be the put. I was like, Uncle Mike's having some lunch. What's the hot spot for Uncle Mike in Parts Unknown? You hitting a little Cracker Barrel, maybe an Applebee's? What's your place of choice, sir? Notre Dame Stadium. Oh, Notre Dame Stadium. Interesting. So we got a little bit of a sense of where the Parts Unknown are this week, listeners. Uh, Mr. Rock Lobster, same question for you. You think our folks are buying that spy put to fade the rally, spy call because they're a bunch of rally crazy fools, or are they buying that straddle because they're greedy? <laughs> I, I have to say I think that I think the crazies are buying puts. Um, and what am I doing right now? I have to say I just got. I'm kind of. I, unfortunately, I'm. I've got as far as trade goes, short vol, short spy. So, um, so I would be more of a straddle. I don't know. It's not really a straddle sale because um, it has a long spy put. Uh, but it's actually more synthetically long a straddle. So me personally, it's more long straddle-esque. Let's see what the folks have in store for us today. And early on, you were fading it, and you're still kind of fading it, even though some of the latecomers are are getting on the rally train. Uh, we're still at 59.3% of you saying you're going to buy that spy put to fade this rally. So you think this rally we're getting right now, it's done by the end of the week. We're back below 3970, listeners. Uh, spy call, so you're in a rally mode, 35.2%. And then buying your straddle because you're very greedy, 5.6% of you. So not a lot of straddle love out there. Let's get out some of your cues here. Let's go out to this question from Angelo. Angelo wants to know, would you recommend to newer traders to spread their funds out over several accounts to sample the offerings at different firms? Or is it better to keep everything in one place for tracking purposes, even if the options offering isn't the best? Interesting question, Angelo. We never really tackled the multi-account conundrum before here on the show. Obviously, we deal with that here at Options Insider because we like to monitor a lot of different things. So we have accounts spread out all over the place, but we are in a relatively unique situation. I don't really recommend that for the lion's share of you out there. Uh, Mr. Uncle Mike, we'll start with you. What do you have to say for Angelo? He wants to know, is it better for him as a newer trader uh, to kind of spread his money out over multiple accounts so he could sample some different offerings or keep it all in one place, even if the place he has it in Maybe isn't the best for options. Well, I mean, I think to get to the, it's important if you're a beginner to keep it simple. So I think you need to find a good platform that you can just understand and do and get a good feel for. And I think initially you need to just stay on one platform. I think just as it goes by, though, there's a lot of places that will let you to open up an account with no money. After you get a feel for things, I would say after six months to a year, start seeing what else is out there. But for the beginning, stay in one spot. Mr. Rock Lobster, do you concur or are you going to take the point counterpoint to Mr. Uncle Mike, sir? Oh, oh I, I didn't know. Um, so almost everybody at Option Pit, at least from our pro level traders, has at least two accounts. Um, and every account has something good for them. Uh, but I, I do agree with Mike, you should get used to probably one platform when you're just starting. Just, you know, to get, you got to get used to how it works. It's kind of like your tool. It's like, you know, um, you know, if, if, if you like to woodwork, you know how you got to learn how to use your table saw. So you're, if you're going to trade options, going to become an, an investor. You want to know how your platform works. Um, and there are really good retail platforms out there right now. Um, so what I would say is, yeah, you definitely want to get good at working those, uh, get good at working them. So I think once you get more advanced, you'll probably want slightly different analytics than you would currently when you first are starting out because you're doing fairly simple things. Uh, mostly, I, I would guess just, you know, I mean, you got to be realistic. Uh, the easiest strategies are like buy rights and just selling puts to collect stock lower and, you know, one by two put spreads. 
Uh, just simple stuff that, you know, get your stocks cheaper. I mean, that's probably the easiest way, I think, to use options for most people that they end up doing pretty well doing that um, once you get used to the concept. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I would say one platform to start. And then as you want to learn more things, you'll probably want some sort of volatility tool if you're going to trade options. Um, I think if you're going to trade options on a short-term basis, you should have uh, some kind of volatility, volatility tool to help you out. There you go. Who was that, Angelo? It seemed like all of us are in agreement. Start off simple. Keep it simple. But as you expand, uh, maybe you want to sample some other offerings and expand your wares accordingly. As we go into our final segment, it is time to go around the block. It's time to tell you what we'll be watching on our trading screens until the next episode. It's time for Around the Block. All right, everybody, welcome to Around the Block, the portion of the show where we tell you what we're keeping an eye on for the rest of this week into the weekend until we can gather here together on the show again on Monday. Mr. Uncle Mike, we'll start with you, sir. What are you keeping an eye on heading into the old weekend? Well, I think with what we need to look at is to see tomorrow's a key day. Can we hold 4,000 tomorrow? And then can we get up? If we do have a crazy day tomorrow, can we get above the 4,200 mark? So I think I'm watching the numbers and watching to see if this rally holds in the bonds as well. Mr. Rocklop, the same question for you. What are you watching through the weekend until Monday, sir? Yeah, I think, yeah. Do we have 4,000 uh, holding? I believe we have Intel and the fruit company earnings, uh, which, you know, I, I think, if anything, they, they might be able to add a little good news. Uh, if the earnings are poor, that could, you know, weigh things down a little bit. Um, and see what's coming out of this congressional bill. It's a big spend. So, uh uh, it's not as crazy as it as first announced, but they're still they're still spending a lot of money they don't have. So um, I, I'd like to see where that goes, but it's it's clearly what that bill is is not making people run away from stocks today. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. It's much more pared down and at least somewhat reasonable relative to some of the other spends that were going on. All right, listeners, that's going to do it for us here on the Option Block today. But if you need more content in your lives, don't worry. I'll be coming back in a little bit uh, with Mr. Rich Excel. He's the uh, professor over there at U of I. He had all those great flies and time calendars and all sorts of crazy stuff. I think it was in the livestock last time. So you never know what he has up his sleeve for trading recommendations. I got a feeling he's playing along in energy and a few other segments today so stay tuned for twifo if you listen in after the fact hit next on your device of choice and uh, twifo should be there waiting for you of course if you listen to live hangout we'll pump some fun live stuff in there and you get to listen to mr rich immediately in a little bit before we do that let's go back around the horn let's start with the uncle list of mics as he's hanging out over there in notre dame land mr uncle mike sir if folks want to reach out to you do a little market chat and where should they go what should they do Feel free to visit my website at stcharleswealth.com to get a hold of me that way. Uh, and also follow me on Twitter, at Mike Tusa, T-O-S-A-W. I try to put out lots of content. He is quite the prolific fellow. Not quite as prolific as us, of course, but prolific nonetheless. And Mr. Rock Lobster, sir, if folks want to check out what you got going, where should they go? What should they do? Uh, go to optionpit.com, 888-TRADE-01, call TED. Uh Got all kinds of products. Got our, uh, you know, cap gains, which we're doing a presentation tonight on it, uh, on how we're going to pivot for uh, the second half of the year. Uh, if you want to kind of run an account, learn how to run an account like a hedge fund, this is an opportunity to do it uh, using risk control and using vol to help uh, generate trade ideas. It's a good time, good place to do it. So, but 888 trades, everyone call Ted. Uh, and check out any of our wares we have over there at Option Pit. There you go. Check out their wares. Their wares are plentiful. And we'll see you back here in a little bit for Twifo. Back again tomorrow for just a palooza, a smorgasbord of content listeners. We've got ball views at noon. We've got after that the pro Q&A. Actually, I take that back. Options oddities after that for all of you cool cats in the secret club. And then after that, if that's not enough, we're coming at you with the pro Q&A as well. So tons of content hitting your ear holes tomorrow for all you cool cats in the secret club. And then back again on Monday. 
another episode of the Option Block. Stay safe out there, everybody. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com.